Uongozi wa mamlaka ya Maritime nchini yani KMA ulipata wakati mgumu kujieleza mbele ya kamati ya masuala ya uwekezaji ya bunge la kitaifa kuhusu ripoti ya mkaguzi mkuu ya mwaka 2017 2018 katika kikao hicho kilicholeta pamoja uongozi mkuu wa mamlaka ya KME akiwemo mkurugenzi mkuu ambaye bado ni mgeni wameonekana kutokuwa na majibu ya maswali haswa jinsi gani waliipa kampuni ya Robinson Harris kandarasi bila kufuatilia kanuni na vipi waliipa kima cha shilingi milioni 4.2 bila kuwepo na stakabadhi za kifedha za kudhibitisha malipo hayo honorable members honorable members We, 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 we have... Mwenyekiti wa kamati hiyo ya PAC ambaye pia ni mbunge wa eneo la Mvita Abdul Samad Sharif Nasir alionekana kugadhabishwa na jinsi uongozi wa KME ukosa kumpa mkaguzi baadhi ya stakabadhi muhimu na kupelekea kusitisha kikao hicho ili uongozi huo wakilishe stakabadhi hizo mara moja that was done after the query So first of all you, you have a judicial review that was done after the query two forget about anything else you have quoted this is just an, a, a, a rejoinder you have quoted minutes here but those minutes themselves are not attached what you have attached to us i don't know whether these are minutes because these looks these look like these do not look like minutes they do not state who and who was there in that meeting or anything they do not state those minutes that you are purporting to attach here do not state anything else the query that is there is so clear that you paid without any vouchers you paid without uh, uh, you know anything at all you did, do not even tell us what job this person has done so first of all exactly now here there is 4.3 So there's a possibility that this amount of money that has been paid is way more than this. Mwanakamati ambaye pia ni mbunge wa Likoni Mishi Mboko, Paul Katana mbunge wa Kaloleni, Rafael Wanjala mbunge wa Budalangi na Rashid Kasim Amin mbunge wa Wajia Mashariki walionekana kutilia shaka na hata kuambia waziwazi mahatibu na mratibu wa shirika la KME kuwa wanajaribu kupotosha wanakamati ili kukwepa maswali hayo. Kwa upande wake mbunge wa Ruaka TJ Kajwang alionekana kuwashikilia ngumu kwa kuchambua zaidi stakabadhi zilizowasilishwa na KME huku maswali yakiulizwa kwa nini licha ya mamlaka hiyo kuwa pwani hawakuipo kampuni kutoka Mombasa kanarasi ya kutaka huduma za mawakili na wanasheria. Uh but this judgment i think the management is bringing to confuse you you know sometimes we go in places and we bring big things you know to mesmerize uh, people that uh, there are big issues here the issue here is very simple as i see number one, there is a question of procurement it is so simple how did you procure this this law robinson and harris Lawyers are procured in two ways. The normal way of tender or prequalification. Most authorities prefer prequalification. All you need to have shown the auditor general is that there is a list of prequalified lawyers. Simple. So the question is, do you have a list of prequalified lawyers? Did you show it to the did you show it to the auditors that you had pre-qualified lawyers in which Robinson and Harris was one of those uh, people number one number two you know you are talking about a special board meeting which uh, approved the appointment of Robinson and Harris you are even making it worse because the board does not have to approve a lawyer that's a, 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 a an ordinary day to day activity that is done by the corporate affairs i mean legal corporate affairs as long as there is a case served against you the uh, director of co uh, corporation secretary should be able to make a decision on which lawyer does what so now this raises our antennas that why is it necessary that there should be a special board a special board to sanction Robinson and Harris how about other young lawyers who are also in your panel when will they ever get work because they will never ever get to this special board also to be tried to do the work so that is procurement very simple and straightforward 
the second thing, you know, you have brought us this case to say that, uh, oh, you shouldn't have, uh, that, that, the, that, that the court has said that uh, that circular by the Attorney General should not be followed. That is fine. But you forgot that this case was decided on uh, 4th of June, 2019. After. Yeah. Much after you had done what you are doing. So this case does not help you. By the time you were doing what you were doing, there was a circular. I also agree with this decision, by the way, because I think there is a problem also with the Attorney General. I don't see how Attorney General wants to control how lawyers want to do their things. But that is another matter. The fact of the matter is that by the time you were doing these things, there was a circular. This is what these people are saying, that why did, not, why did you not abide by the circular of the Attorney General? Because at that time, it was the advice given by the constitutional authority, which has the mandate of advising government. All right? So explain it very clearly. Then the last thing, you have not told us which business the, ex, the, the, the particular business Robson and Harris was doing. Which case was this? Okay. What was the transaction? What was the transaction? But lastly, how do you pay anybody, not just a lawyer, even for uh, sweeping services, cleaning services, how do you pay without a payment voucher? I don't understand that. It looks like uh, Harrison, you just went to the bank and uh, mailed money directly or paid by M-Pesa or something like that. How was it that there was no payment voucher? And how is it that this payment voucher was not shown to the auditor? That really smacks of, I, I don't understand how that ever can be done, that a lawyer can be paid because there is withholding, uh, withholding uh, taxes, there are VATs that are expected out of that sums. So how do you pay without a payment voucher? Those are the issues. Mamlaka ya KM ilitakikana kueleza vizuri kuhusu sinto fahamu ya shilingi milioni 4.2 kulipa kwa kampuni hiyo ya Robinson Harris kutoka Nairobi kinyume cha kanoni milioni 39 zilizotumika kwa chakula na malazi ya bodi ya wakurugenzi milioni 5.1 zilizotumika kufanya hamasisho la maambukizi ya virusi vya HIV. Hata hivyo kikao hicho kitarudiwa tena huku mwenyekiti wa PAC Abdul Samad Sharif Nasir kuwataka KME kuwasilisha stakabadhi husika na wahusika waliotakiwa kufika mbele ya kamati hiyo. Nikiripotia Ashifa TV jina langu ni Sofia Abdullahi.